So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do a couple things tonight. The first thing we're gonna do is make the lunchbox cakes. So in case you all didn't see them, they are these little guys. They're so cute. They all fit in a little lunchbox container. It's like a six by six uh, to go box. Um, and ultimately, we'll tie it all up with some twine and a fork. And who knew that there would be a cake in your little to-go container? Um, so to start with those, I have done some pre-work. Um, so a couple things, preparing the printer to actually print. So I want to show you all um, what I did with the printer. So you'll see here, I have printed a template. So what I did with my little mini cakes is I put them all on six inch round discs. So let me show you. This is my repaired cake. These are like four and a half inch cakes and they're only about an inch tall. Um, and so I frosted them all with buttercream and they're on a six inch disc. And so what I did on the actual printer is I created a template that printed a whole bunch of six inch circles. They're actually slightly bigger than six inches so that I can see the outline when I go ahead and place my cakes. And that's really just acting as like a guide so that I know that my image is going to be centered on the cake. Um, so then what I wanna do is just place all of my cakes and I've got five of them to print for you all tonight. Centered right there on the template. So do the cakes have to be like all the same height or perfectly level? So that's a really good question. Everything that you want to print on this platform needs to be about the same height. You can have small variations in height, but when you have a a pretty big variance in height, you're going to get some fuzzy, blurry images and some very sharp images. Um, so you want to make sure that you set your platform height, and I'll show you how we're going to do that, um, so that you get it right up next to your cake. So I'm actually going to move this up and in. It might be really loud right now, so hang tight. So I'm adjusting the platform up so that my cakes are within about a quarter inch or a little bit closer to this bar right here. So I'm gonna move them in. So the idea is to get it as close to that print head as you can without touching it. Exactly, really right up there. So see, there's like hardly any clearance. Uh -huh. I'm gonna just make sure that I clear all of them because some of them are a little bit different in height. Um, so I wanna make sure that all of them clear that bar because this platform is going to go all the way back in. And that one. Okay. So, um, Steve wants to know what size your workbench that is that Big Blue is sitting on. Ooh. That's okay, so I, I believe it's about, um, we have the dimensions and I always forget them. So this, this table is a stainless steel uh, commercial kitchen table. Um, I believe it is, actually, I have a tape measure. Hold on. Yeah. It's 30 inches deep, and I think it's a 48. Yeah, it's 30 by 48. Deb, are you still there? I can't hear you, Lori. 
Deb is not, but Lori is. <laughs> okay, I will just keep talking then. <laughs> keep on going. Deb will come back on in just a minute, and then so, uh, you just keep on going, and you'll hear her in a minute. Okay. Okay. I saw a question about getting a little icing on the cake. Um, it sort of, um, basically, it will more so ruin your cake if you do, or your cookie, or whatever you have. It'll leave a black smudge mark across it. Um, so you can. It it won't damage. It'll just ruin your your cake or your cookie. Okay, I'm back. So sorry about that. My internet is not the best where I'm at. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So what I was saying is, we took the lid off the crate, and we used that as our base, and put it right on that metal table, and it fit just fine. What you do have to check is that your crate will actually fit through your door if you are not in a commercial <laughs> kitchen. Yeah, you ran into that problem. Yeah. Yeah, we started actually because of this, we send out all the dimensions of the crate as well as the printer itself and how to turn it and everything. We got all this good information now, which is great. Okay. So I have all my cakes on and I'm just going to pull up my printer file um, and I'm going to hit print and it might be a little bit loud. So I probably won't be talking while it prints. It's probably, well, we'll see if you guys can hear me, but it'll probably take a few minutes to print all five of the cakes. Um, so just bear with us. All right, normally you all can hear me over, over the noise of it. Um, do you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Do you, now, do you find that it's like really, really loud in there or it's just that when that platform moves, it likes to be loud? Um, it's more so when the platform, when you're moving the platform up and down, that is uh -huh. the loudest. Okay. Um, all right. I was just curious about that. Is it hard to get all those cakes flat? Like, I don't bake, so I like to ask these questions. So, all of those ones, I actually didn't do. I had my 17-year-old daughter last night ice them for me. So, she actually did all of those, and she did a really good job getting them all flat for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So... Yeah. Considering she's a relatively beginner, no, it's not hard. And they don't have to yeah. be perfect. I mean, I wasn't striving for perfection with these. Um, uh -huh. So I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> well, they're being kind of turned into a lunchbox cake mm -hmm. or a lunchbox box. No. Um, I know Bev is asking about like the voltage and things. It's just a standard plug, but we recommend always that you um, use a battery backup uh, power surge protector, like just like you would with, for any other computer equipment. So no, the, the, the lights will not dim when you're using it. <laughs> you haven't had that problem, I'm assuming? No, no lights dimming? It's it's just a regular outlet. It doesn't take too much power, just like any other appliance. Yeah, nothing special, which is great. So this, reason, one, yeah. this one is a good example of what happens with the difference in height. So this cake was a little bit shorter than all the other ones. And as once it prints, I'll show you the difference so you guys can see. Um, but I had to drop the platform down a little bit more than I wanted to because there was a one cake that was a little bit taller. So I'll be able to show you guys what happens when you don't have the same height. And usually like all of your cookies, like if you do royal icing cookies, if you use a rolling pin where your cookies are all the same thickness, you should never run into any issues ever like printing on multiple cookies on a platform. Um, because they're all the same height. With cakes, you're going to get a different story because cakes bake different heights and frosting different heights, so it's a little bit trickier. 
Um, but if you do marshmallows, so I printed on marshmallows to make s'mores kits. And there's like the big fat square marshmallows. Those were all different heights. Sometimes they were varying by like a quarter to a half an inch difference in height. So I had to like go through the bag and choose which ones to put on the platform and print in different batches to get the height the same. Yeah, the marshmallows do vary. We like to print on them at shows. I know you guys have seen us print on them a lot. Um, and I do end up with marshmallows because there's just no controlling a marshmallow. <laughs> Some of them I could smoosh down, but I would take them out and kind of put them together in their heights. Um, yeah, and some are even cockeyed, you know, or skewed. But so, but um, it really, it does a pretty good job. Um, I know there's more questions about the 110 volt. Um, so we, blue printers come in three sizes. The um, little blue, which is uh, half the plate size as what you have. You have a half sheet cake size board that you can print on. And little blue is a quarter sheet. It's half the size um, and it fits on your countertop. And um, then we have Big Blue XL, which is like twice the size of Big Blue. All of them use 110 volt. Um, the only difference is between these printers is the size of the plate and then how high the uh, plate can go. So the one Big Blue goes about, what, seven and three quarters inches. Little Blue is about four. It's half of that. And XL is also... Uh, like seven and three quarters close to eight. Um, so if you have di different heights of food, is it better to print just one food thing at a time? Um, you, so you can do different um, shapes, which you did with your um, nativity set, but the heights have to be pretty, pretty consistent. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's spraying the ink on almost like an airbrush, sort of, but not really. Yeah, can you can you see the blurriness on this one? Um, I apologize. I gotta wait for the delay because my our the the background screen that I see first is blurry, but the screen that everybody sees is clear, so it's catching up. So. Yeah. The, the first one that I printed is the lower, it's a, it was a shorter cake. So there is that overspray. Um, uh -huh. So we'll show that in a little bit. See, it just knows what it's doing. Okay, so yeah, I can see the overspray a little bit now. Yeah. Um, there was a question I think I saw Katie ask the designs. So I actually use Canva to design all of these images. Um, and then in Canva, um, I just save as a JPEG image and then I upload it into the print uh, software. That's a great question. So it's, it's almost like regular printing. It's just that um, you just use a certain particular program to, to bring them into print. So you can use any program you want to design it. Um, it's just a special uh, program that allows you to for placement. Any other questions, guys? Let's see. I'm looking. Okay, so far, I'm, I'm surprised you guys are so quiet. Are you guys mesmerized? I know I stare at it all the time. <laughs> um, okay, so doggy bag, which blue would you suggest for doing cookies? Um, I will tell you my favorite is big blue if you have the space because it's only is uh, 200, what about a 200, $275 difference between little blue and big blue, and you get twice the sp space. Um, so big blue is always the best deal. Um, Denise wants to know, Natalie, do you find that people wanting decorated cookies, want the fancy iced cookies with dimensions versus flat a flat print? Do you ever combine both techniques of dimension, dimensional icing and printing? Yeah, so I think I think it's all how you market 
Because if you tell somebody, oh, I'm going to print your cookie, they're like, what? You're going to print my cookie? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> um, so I actually did an order for a National Guard retirement a couple weeks ago. And I think Deb actually posted the image if you wanted to see them. Th that was a 100% printed, um, printed order. I took the order without... <laughs> without even thinking I would print any, like I was gonna do it all by hand, but I started um, designing it. I'm like, man, if I used my printer, I could have very clean cut lines with like the National Guard logo and uh, some stars for the background. So I started designing it. I was like, this is gonna look so cool. And bonus for me, I don't have to write on like four dozen cookies. Um, so I ended up printing them all a hundred percent because I just thought they looked so cool. And, you know, the other side to it, like this was a, a military retirement. So having those clean lines and everything like perfectly spaced, I was like, it, I, it just felt like it went together. And so I printed it a hundred percent and she, he wrote me afterwards and she's like, Oh my gosh. Like everybody was like saying how awesome those cookies were. She's like, I have a few people that want to order for their retirements so it's it's you're gonna get you're gonna get a certain crowd that is totally fine with 100 percent printed you're gonna get other people who still want those hand details um and then i'm doing a, a bridal shower set in a couple of weeks and i'm gonna use both i'm gonna print their floral invitation image but i'm gonna do some hand piping writing so definitely combine the two especially if they are wanting that 3d um look Okay. So, um, Lori, actually, actually, either one of you can answer this about how much space do you need in the rear of the printer because the bed moves forward and back. Um, it's not a whole lot of space that you need back there, but uh, most of it's within the width. Oh, we're going on a ride, guys. <laughs> Same, not, not a whole lot. So, which is good. Um, so, Bev, so with the software um, and all that stuff, hey, Heather, um, basically what happens when you buy the blue printer, um, you get a coach, which is actually Lori. She's our big blue coach. And she will walk you through all the software, make sure you understand how to use it. Um, the learning curve is not huge. Um, so, um, that way you guys can totally understand it. We don't just say, here's a software, see ya. Um, it's definitely um, definitely some one-on-one -on -one there. We don't. We want you to have a lot of success with it. Um, and we're finding that people are catching on. Natalie, what did you think about the ease of the software? Um, it's really simple. If you, if you can, if you already use a Cricut and you use the Cricut platform, you're going to get the, the print platform really simple. You'll, you'll pick it up really fast. <laughs> Deb says, yay, Lori to the rescue. Um, <laughs> no, we, we found that it's pretty easy to use. So you're never left alone, which is nice. Um, right. Also, we have a coupon that's going to be coming on in a minute um, for this, if it's something that you're thinking of. Go ahead. Sorry, sweetie. There you go. Oh, my gosh. That is adorable. Um, so that's Tell me. Yeah. Okay. You go. I talk too much. Yeah. I love the clarity of that image. Yeah. Yeah. It gets... I'm just gonna put this little cake on a piece of pretty Valentine paper and then you can drop it in your lunchbox to go cleaner. So I just have a piece of paper. It's like a wax paper printed. Um, Where do you get these? Like you get special packaging from somewhere. Your advent calendar, that was definitely special. Um, the, ad, the advent calendar came from Miss Cookie Packaging. 
She has a website with all kinds of super cute cookie packaging. Um, she's got boxes. She's got bags for every holiday. She has new releases. Um, so she has a lot of fun stuff. So if you're not following it, her page, you should. Is it Miss M-I-S-S? -S? Yes. Cookie packaging? Yep. There you go. Hopefully I got that right, guys. Yep, I did. Look at that. Yeah, those are adorable. I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're funny. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I have a few other things to print. Let's go, girl. Unless anybody else has lunchbox cake questions. <laughs> All right, so uh, we do, Doggy Bag Biscuits does have a question about the laptop. Um, it is not required to uh, purchase the laptop, but we highly recommend it um, mainly, and, and Natalie's gonna comment on this as well, um, mainly because um, when we install the software, there's a lot of programs and, and security and things like that that can interfere. Um, and your training goes much smoother if you have a, a, a blue eye laptop. So we actually have a code here if you purchase your printer. We've got some feedback here all of a sudden. It's really loud sometimes. I know, I saw, it was like I heard myself twice. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, um, so I forgot where I was going with it, but, uh, you, you can't use Apple products with it. Um, we have a coupon as I was, that's what I was saying about for 50 bucks off of when you purchase both of them. But Natalie, tell me about like, you didn't purchase the laptop at first. Is that right? Yeah. So I didn't originally yeah. purchase the laptop when I bought the printer. Cause I was like, well, I have a computer. Um, you know, I can just use my own personal computer, but, um, when I thought about it, I was like, it's probably going to be better if I have just a dedicated computer for the printer, because I'm going to be dealing with a ton of images. Um, so being able to save images directly to that computer, just use that computer just for the images versus all of my personal stuff. So I did go ahead and, and buy the laptop, which has been really great because um, I just keep that laptop right here by the printer um, unless I need to do some formatting or whatever. So it's kind of like my go-to just for the printer. Yeah, we have just found through, most people end up buying the laptop even if they don't initially because of security systems and things interfering, we just find that people have much more success with it. Um, so, um, you know, because it's preloaded, you have everything ready to go. It's also really so. nice that whenever I have a problem, Lori, without even connecting to my computer, can just say, oh, yeah, go here, 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 change this thing. Like on the phone, she can tell me what I need to do because she's got one too. So she knows everything that's on it and how to navigate it. So it makes it really simple for her to help me out. Right, and it's not crazy expensive. That's another thing I like about it. And it's not too big and not too small. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let her do her thing right now. Okay, I am moving this down. Oh, I saw Denise asked a question on charging a cake. Yeah. So it's really going to vary by your area. If you're in a city, if you're in a country setting, um, what your market demands. Um, I am selling these cakes for 15. Um, just remember the time and effort. I mean, for anything, remember the time and effort, your supplies cost to do it. You are formatting some of the images. And I am also offering people the option to send me their own picture and print it on the cake. So my time for designing, for uploading the image, for printing. So I'm doing 15 um, for those. All right, and, and you're you're in Tennessee, so yeah, every every area does differ. So 
Okay, so let me tell you what we're gonna do. We are gonna print on the top of this guy. So this is- How tall is he? This is a five inch tall cake. So I'm gonna use the same template that we just used because I put this on a six inch round. Um, so I'm gonna use the same template, but I do need to adjust the platform um, so that this will fit under the printer. So it's gonna be pretty loud, but I'm gonna put the platform down. Got quieter. All right, let's see if I can slide this in. Oh, I need to go a little bit farther. Did you make that or did your daughter? I did this one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Slides right in there perfectly. So again, I'm just going to line up the six inch cake board within the circle. Um, it's an adorable cake. Thank you. I had fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think what she's doing right now, she's on her laptop, getting yes. ready to print. Yes. I am pulling up the program and pulling up the file. Oh, you have the, there it goes, there it goes. So Bev, um, I know Bev, you're worried about accessing the internet on the, on a PC. There are no, if there are no fireworks, secure, oh, fireworks, <laughs> firewalls. Um, the laptop is hardwired to Big Blue. So um, you won't have to worry about that at all. Um, and you have, I can of course use Wi-Fi and uh, access the internet on it as well. Uh, Bev, I saw your question about accessing Canva. Um, I do both. So there is a browser on, I mean, that you can use on the, the laptop. Um, so sometimes I will just use Canva and save, or I will pull it up on my personal laptop. And I use Google Drive to just drop the images into and then I can pull them up on the printer laptop from Google Drive. Bev, you're asking great questions. Keep keep on firing them all over. <laughs> so, um, why did you buy this printer? Um, I thought it would be a really fun tool to have and to be able uh -huh. to kind of take cookies and cakes up a notch. I will be completely honest, I actually had purchased another edible printer, like direct-to-food printer. And literally, like I, I paid for it, I had just ordered it, and then I saw a, I saw you guys post um, something about Big Blue. And I was like, no way, I didn't, I didn't even know that you guys had this because I've had your regular edible printer for years. And so as soon as I saw you had the blue printers, I went ahead and canceled my other order and I ordered a blue printer. Um, so um, really just to take things up a notch and to be quite honest, I think my handwriting is terrible. So <laughs> this guy, you can put um, lettering on cookies and trace. So like for all you cookie people out there, I know you all use projectors. I haven't used a projector yet, um, but this allows me to print a very light, like if you use like a light gray or a light color of whatever uh, royal icing you're gonna use, 
you can print your text on here and then just trace it on your cookie. And so, that brings the dimension. Yes. Correct? <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, um, so you know, you said you switched, you know, from another, another printer you were getting, why was that? What made you, besides our amazing reputation, um, <laughs> what well, made you actually, what was the, the, what made you do that? So there were a couple things. Um, number one, you all just have really great customer service. Like I said, like I had a printer for several years before I bought Big Blue. And I would call and there was always someone there to help me or a troubleshoot. Um, so I knew that it was a, you know, person that I was going to be connecting to. So uh, really great customer service. That was probably like the number one thing. The other thing was you can do this on tall cakes. And so I do a lot of tall cakes. So being able to do something like this was really appealing to me to have that height. And then just the, the width as well, because like, I think it's a half sheet cake or a quarter sheet, half sheet cake. Yeah. Yep. It does a half sheet and, you know, as I said before, each one does a different size. Yeah. Oh, let it's me, done. Let me turn this guy around. So that, that was pretty quick and that cake is decorated. Yeah. Oh, wow. Easy, easy peasy. I mean, can you, I, again, I don't decorate cakes. So can you like, um, like, uh, where, where I forgot where I was going with this. I guess how, how the, the speed in which that was done with the quality, do you feel like it saves you a lot of time? Um, um, yes. I mean, yes. you're not, you're not going to get the small detail fonts all the time. It, that would take you a while. And, and then the skill level to actually do a small detail print or font or whatever. Um, and I literally pulled this image off Canva, um, mm -hmm. downloaded it. And just upload it. It took me literally, I think, all in all time, five minutes maybe to create the image, download it, and then get it into the printer program and actually do the print file. Gotcha. And so that's a good point. I never thought about it. The detail of get writing a small font, you know, writing something small is hard to do by hand, but you're going to get that clarity with the with the image. Mm -hmm. um, which is great. That's a very good point. And Bev says, is that a ganache drip? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is actually a water, it's a water ganache drip. Ah. A sugar, sugar geek. If you guys don't follow sugar geek, I would highly recommend following her on Facebook. She's a really great resource, has all the different kinds of recipes and trip. Um, you kind of look like her. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> You're a cross between Liz and Liz, both Liz's. Um, you, you, because I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm like, gosh, you remind me a little bit of Liz and a little bit of, um, oh, uh, what's her name? The other Liz. Um, oh, oh, gosh, my head's going. She was just on. She was awesome and amazing. Um, Magoo, Artie. You're a cross between Artie and Liz, and yeah, her real name is Liz. So you're a cross between Artie Magoo as well as Liz from Sugar Geek. <laughs> and she, you do look a little Avalon-ish, yeah. <laughs> Avalon. Yeah, you, you, she came around about the same time that, uh, that Liz did from Sugar Geek. Got it. Um, so you'll look her up, you'll be like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's your coloring. <laughs> All right, I got All right, one so more yeah. thing. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I got one more thing for us. I know we've got like 15 minutes left, so I wanted to actually- You're fine. Through it. I have this template that I printed. Um, mm -hmm. And put on cookies. Cool. So that matches the cakes too, which is great. I did use the same image for the cakes. Um, so I'm just putting this template on the platform. Okay. You guys probably saw, I don't know if you can see my blue. That's just like blue painter tape that I use to, and 
And that template, so actually, let me show you. Okay. So this is just a big piece of paper. Lori, I don't know where, or Deb, I don't know where y'all got this paper, but I'm probably gonna need more soon. Okay. All right, just holler at us, we'll give you a link. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it's a paper that we print templates on and I just put it on the platform and I just use a little bit of painter tape, the blue tape, okay. to, uh, stick, stick the template on, make it whole. And it's that easy. Boom. So the paper size on that template is, um, 11 by 17, I believe. Um, and it just, it fits on there nicely. It works really well. All right, so we got a lot of questions. I'll answer some of them. So Kelly said that you're considering one of these rather than a different one because you don't like to have to deal with cartridges. And I will tell you what was the coolest thing for me when I was looking to design and bring on a printer, uh, direct to food printer was, yeah, go ahead and do it because they can hear me. Okay. So you're fine. Okay. okay. Um, was I could pretty much design what I wanted and I had the option of going with a cartridge or or cartridge or the tanks and um you know i've dealt with cartridges for many 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 years and they're expensive and they can be finicky and obviously the best option is always to have a tank printer and we offer tank printers as well with the papers um so to be a, you know there, there were several things that i wanted that was number one um number two was i wanted to be able to do different heights i wanted to be able to do a lot at a time. I wanted to be able to do different shapes as if I'm using it, I'm not. But um, those were all important factors for me and I wanted it to be easy to use and pay itself back quickly. Okay, go ahead, you talk now. <laughs> I saw your comment about uh, what you can print on, roll icing. Uh -huh. So we're gonna do roll icing and that's all I've done right now, but obviously we just did buttercream. I did chocolate ganache we just printed on. Uh, you can do macarons. Oh, I point. printed on marshmallows. Actually, you just put M and M's. Just talked to my friend about three D printing me an M and M tray for this thing. Oh, cool! So that is up next. That is my next um, my next print project is trying to print on M and M's. So it's a tray. Like you didn't tell me this. I did not tell you this because this is like just over the weekend. I was I was chatting with her about it because she's printed. She actually printed me these cookie cutters, um, and you need a way to hold the M and M's on the platform, right? And yeah, you need a way to make them like you have to be very precise with your positioning. So if you had a tray like a, a square tray or something that had little divots or something in it to actually set the M&Ms in, then you could create your template mm -hmm. using the position of those divots in the tray to put on your M&Ms. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So that's my next project. That's so, so cool. Awesome. I want, you need to tell me all about that, you know, and then also post about it. We have a, a YouTube, a YouTube, a Facebook group just for, the owners of these printers where they can share this kind of thing, which is awesome, um, awesome sauce. So, um, and Bev, yes, you can use your edible printer, um, I'm sorry, edible papers and print directly on them. Um, just, you know, all of them, it's the same thing. Um, but before I, I had stopped myself, the, the cartridges, um, no cartridges, your ink costs are pennies, like the low pennies, like several dec decimal point with zero, zero, zeros, because you're able to pour that ink directly in. So your your cost of use is so low, it's crazy. Okay. And yes, there's the learning curve is very small. I'm letting her go because I'm trying to read everything. Yeah, Kelly, about the cartridges, she just did a bunch of logo cookies um, and she ran out of one of the colors and had to, you know, she, it, it was basically ruined, ruined things. She had to start all, all over. Um, yes, you could use butcher paper. Um, is the paper 
13 by 21, I forgot. Thank you for clarifying that. So when you see icing images post, some of that's Lori, some of it's me. I generally talk more, Lori general, generally you know, responds in writing, but not sometimes I do as well. And yeah, you do get the paper that comes with the blue, blue printers and you've been doing this for a while and you still have a lot of paper left. Yeah, because what, what I do is I, so I do two different types of templates. So this template that I'm using, you actually see the image on it. So that's a very unique shape and a unique cookie. So I'll actually print the image on the paper so that I know what template is for. But with the, the six inch cake, like the cake boards that we were just using, it's just an outline. And that's because all I need is that circle so that I know where to place it within the design. So I, I do two different template types. There's one that has just your basic outline for shapes that you're gonna use over and over again. And then there's like unique, fun images and shapes that I just print um, the image straight to it. And I mean, I guess that, you know, you put ink on the papers is that a waste of ink but in all honesty like it's not that much ink um so yeah. your cost is like you said pennies yeah yeah the cost of the ink oh i have to i have to, i'll look it up while we're chatting but um kathy asked a very good pre question um and she's she was concerned about if she doesn't use it regularly what will happen so Kathy, this, this is a printer that is, is meant to be a workout horse. Many people buy this because they can't eat, they can't get good, they can't get good help these days. Um, and it replaces employees at times when they can't get decorators in um, because it's just the way the economy is right now. And so, um, so it's meant to be used. Now, I don't know if you know this, Natalie, but we are working on another version, like an update to the software, which of course you'll get um, once it's all ready, um, still in progress, that will actually um, print um, for you to, on like regular paper in between the times that you're not printing. But again, I still wouldn't rely on that. It's meant to be used. And Lori can clarify that as well. Um, Bev, the, the, the printer doesn't, doesn't scan it. You actually are making the templates, printing on the templates. She reuses her templates, so that's why she takes them on and off, which is kind of the way you want to do. Yeah, so with, with the templates, it's not like Cricut. You know how Cricut, the Cricut program, where you can upload an image to like print and cut? where you print the image separately and then you the the machine actually has to like scan for the the outline um, in order to know where your print is to cut it. This doesn't do that because you're creating one print file, you're printing it, and then you're using that same print file to put your images on and use it. So you're using the same print file to print um, both your template and your image. Okay. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting private messages. Sorry about that. Like, huh, where'd this come from? Um, okay. Um, so when she was lowering and, and go, go, making the tray go up and down, there's two ways to do it. One of them is the buttons that are directly on it. <clears throat> You can also do it directly from the laptop. So you have options, just whatever's easiest for you. Yep. Um, Pay attention, um, Dave. <laughs> so, so, so you got this. So I've got the cookies. Um, and this is where the precision really comes into play because you want to line up your cookies to the printed template. Um, so you probably saw me like get up on a step stool so I could see the ones in the way back that I had put them over the image all the way. Um, so now I really just wanna make sure that they clear, that we've got clearance under there. So I'm gonna put the platform in and I'm actually going to raise it up a little bit because I do have room. And then I'm just gonna make sure they all clear um, by putting the, the platform all the way in. 
making sure I don't have any tall ones that are is going to hit. And we are good. I don't know if you all can see, but it's a tiny little clearance. Yeah. You can barely see the, the darkness between the two. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna grab my print file. That was easy. <laughs> I was like, boom, done. Um, so what is the optimal clearance? It's pretty close. Um, I better work on my <laughs> baked bubbles. Uh, yeah, um, the clearance, you, you have a, actually it's rather large. It's a five millimeter variance that you can have. Um, you, you want it as close as possible, but if, it, you know, if something's kind of rounded like this first cakes where there were some, some areas that weren't as flat, um, you got five millimeters, which is, it really is a lot of, of clearance. Um, and there it goes. I mean, she's, what I like is your precision with everything. You just got it down. Um, you do a great job. Love it. So I did look up um, the price because I never remember prices um, uh, of the ink. So to refill those tanks, for all four colors, it's 12 ounces of each color. You actually only pay $168 for the whole entire set. And um, I'm best betting you haven't even used three quarters of your ink as of yet. That's a guess, maybe a half. And you've had it for quite a while. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think I've used half since October if a quarter yeah i don't i don't even think there's a quarter missing yeah it goes a long way so that's why it's 0. 0.0003 or something ridiculously small amount of money to to print with uh, Bev wants to know how often you use your printer. Um, recently, I've been using it at least once a week. Okay. And, and I'm just a home-based after-hours baker. <laughs> I know you're up early and go to bed late. I, I do notice that. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I know that Lori, that's what she just posted. She had a, a thousand cookies to do right for Christmas and used very little ink. So, and I will tell you like the cartridges in our regular printers, um, the amount of ink they hold is, is so minimal. The cost that you're paying for when you buy those cartridges is actually the cartridge itself and not the ink. So if you look at our cartridge price, which is in the $60 range for all four, this is for the regular printers. Um, and you look at the cost of our refills, which is like 40 something dollars. You can refill those cartridges six times with the ink that comes in a two ounce set of, uh, set of refills, which is crazy uh, when you consider the price difference. Um, and the cartridges, we don't have cartridges, sweetie. No cartridges, um, unless you're talking about a regular printer. Can you print colors on, go ahead, what? Right back there. Yeah, those are the tanks back there. Can you print colors on fondant, like instead of needing the, in the color, just print the color on top and put it, on the cake or whatever. I don't know. That's a very good question. <laughs> Not a bad question. I'm interested in that. Um, and so then I, Julie, I did ahead. print on fondant last weekend. I made a little nameplate to go on a cake that said Princess Indy, and it was like calligraphy with some florals. I just rolled out some fondant 
put it on the platform on some uh, plastic wrap and print it directly onto the fondant and then used a cookie cutter to cut out the plaque and I put it on the cake. Oh, that's awesome. This is so fun to listen to you and the things that you that you do. Um, the tanks don't get ref the tanks you just pour the ink right into you use over and over again. Um, you just dump dump the dump the ink right in. Um, Julie wants has a good question. Have you found that you get distortion on your cookies after you bag them? I see with other printers, a lot of people are complaining about that. Yeah, so that is one thing that I'm kind of working through. So um, I think a lot of it has to do with the moisture that's in your cookie, how long you bake it. But um, I did find that the National Guard retirement order that I did that was 100% printed, I had let dry for 48 hours. Um, I put it in go. the dehydrator. So that's what I've been doing first. So that's my dehydrator right there. So as soon as these cookies get done, you can kind of see the sheen on them. I did lower the saturation levels, like the ink levels on my printer down a little bit, just because if there's too much ink sitting on your royal icing, it's going to start dissolving your icing. So as soon as these are done, I'm gonna put them in the dehydrator and I'll usually leave them in my dehydrator just on the fan setting, no heat, just so that there's air on it, like a fan. Um, I'll leave those in for four to six hours. And then after that, I'll just let them air dry for probably another, I don't know, I would say like 40 hours, 48 hours. And I usually put them on paper towels so that the bottoms of the cookies can absorb the butter out of them because butter, um, butter makes you the cookies bleed if you've ever dealt with royal icing and bleeding. You can also get butter bleed into your royal icing. So I set all my cookies on a paper towel and I put them in the dehydrator. And then the ones that I did leave out for the 48 hours, I had no problem with bleed on bags. Um, I did some other cookies that I only left overnight, so 12 hours, and I put them in bags and immediately like the ink started um, getting onto the bag. So I did take them out and put some cornstarch because you can dust cornstarch on them that would absorb some of that ink. Um, that worked a little bit better, but I think you will find that you really need to dry them for a good at least 24 hours, if not a little bit longer, so that there's actually, you know, t enough time for it to fully dry because that is, it is a, a bit of ink going on, going on there yeah yeah especially with black you have a lot of colors mixing um so yeah you can also print on the fondant like you were talking about but you can wrap it around the cake as well you can print on your icing sheets or cello sheets or smart sheets and wrap that around as well so it's kind of a two-in-one printer um and then she that wants to know how thick your cookies are these ones are three eighths of an inch. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that is it. But Bev, where you were going with printing on the fondant, that is a great idea to get a, the color that you want. And then you would you have to knead it? I guess I, I'm not. I don't. I don't know how to answer that. But I think that would be like you could just print the top the one color you want. <laughs> you know. Now I just put the link up as well for you guys so that you can see the different prices um, of the printers. Do you feel like you've gotten the value out of the printer that you were looking at for? Yeah, I mean, it's a long term investment, right? You got to get over that initial sticker shock and think like long term. It's a big investment up front, but like, if you take, so I don't know what you all price your cookies at, but mine, I do like 48 a dozen. So if you sell four dozen, that's like 10% of the cost of this. So you only need nine more orders to cover that nine more four dozen orders. So if you, if you break it down in terms of like the orders that you would need to sell, it's really not going to take you long to recoup the cost of that. 
So while it is a big initial investment, just think of the long term, like you're going to make your money back in like no time, especially if you it's interesting businesses. Yeah, logo. yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it's interesting that what you said, because the regular printers that print on icing sheets, um, you it takes you about 10 prints to get it back, but that's one icing sheet, these are printing dozens of cookies at a time. And it's that same, depending on your pricing, it's that same ratio. I think that's interesting. It's just, you're doing a lot more at a time. Those are adorable. Those are so adorable. Yep. Oh my gosh. I love it. I just want to eat one now. <laughs> Wow, I love the precision. Like that, look at the shape of the, the hair on that. The, 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 the curves, I should say. And it's just like dead on, that's awesome. And oh, 